Now, there are many iconic Doom levels. E1-M1, Hangar, Map 29, The Living End, and of course, E3-M6, Mount Erebus, are some examples. Originally, my favourite level in Doom 1 was Mount Erebus, but I think that has changed with E4-M2. Perfect Hatred. This level from the Ultimate Doom is one of the best that the game has to offer, and it implemented the new design philosophies that were established in Doom 2, since Episode 4 was made after of course. Mount Erebus might have been more open-ended and revolutionary, as it allowed players to explore at their own pace, and it pushed the Doom engine to its limits at the time, but Perfect Hatred by John Romero is a masterpiece, and it was only made in 6 hours. This level is brutal, and is yet another kick in the nuts since it comes after E4M1, but the design is excellent. I love the wooden textures and lava combination, as well as the amount of verticality that's present in the level. The player is typically getting into fights with monsters in confined spaces, which makes every encounter tense, as you just have enough ammo to take them out comfortably. With that in mind, this level feels like a precursor to Sigil, and the types of maps Romero would design for that megawad. Perfect Hatred also has the most barons of any level in the Ultimate Doom, and they are very well placed to best fuck over and surprise the player. Even though E4M2 is focused and rather linear, everyone seems to have different strategies on how to tackle the level, which is part of the reason why I love it. My strategy at the start is to bait out the Kaku Demon that's directly below the platform and kill him so he doesn't get in the way, as well as take out the demons on the right side so I can get the armor without any issues. Then I hop down and pick up the Rad Suit and Soul Sphere. From there I kill the army of Kaku Demons while I'm in the lava so I have more space to maneuver compared to the initial platform that I was on. With that all in mind, if we take a look at classic Doom YouTuber Ultima Mantoid's video on E4M2, we'll see an entirely different approach to mine. He makes it a priority to kill the demons on the left platform first, in order to make it to the room with all of the hit scanners. From there he teleports back around, killing the surrounding imps at the start of the level, and then he heads off to collect the yellow key and plasma rifle. I love how this level allows you to be so creative, and while it's not the only map in Classic Doom that people have different strategies for, E4M2 is the shining example of it, in Doom 1 at least. Zedenda1990 is another Doom YouTuber that I'd like to point out, as I watched both Ultima Mantoid and Zedenda when I was like 13 playing Doom. He has a similar strategy to Ultima Mantoid, with heading into the hit scanner room first, but he makes a detour into the Mega Armor Secret and he performs the BFG grab. Yeah, so there are quite a few quirks to this level, with the BFG grab being one of them. Instead of getting the secret BFG when you telefrag the Cyber Demon, you can actually get it early by just ramming into a specific part of this wall. The Stefan Winterfeld jump is another trick you can pull off if you want to get the level done quicker. Instead of wasting time getting the blue key, you can actually strafe jump past the blue key barrier and make your way to the exit. This trick was invented by Stefan Winterfeld obviously, and he was a Doom speedrunner from back in the day. Back to the yellow key area, Ultima Mantoid and Zedan opt to go into the hit scanner room, but you can take the opposite approach by sprinting onto the bridge that raises up. From there I grab the plasma rifle and try to kill the Baron that's directly in front of me first and foremost. He is the biggest threat in the area, and if you eliminate him, then you have way more room on the bridge to deal with the other Barons that spawned in behind you. The next part of the level with the lava cracks on the ground and the rocky wall textures reminds me a ton of Sigil. You're fighting a group of monsters in a very tight space with no real way out, and it's so dickish that you get the rocket launcher of all weapons beforehand. The rocket launcher is ideal for killing barons, and it's a great weapon for crowd control, but too bad the area is so compact that you'll get killed by the splash damage. So Perfect Hatred is a pretty perfect level. It doesn't really have that much exploration, the level is quite straightforward as it's literally just an uphill battle, but at the same time there is so much room to be creative and implement your own strategies. 
The level also looks really nice with a good use of the wood and lava textures, but to be fair, Romero has always designed good looking maps. I don't know if I would call this the hardest map in the Ultimate Doom, but it is undeniably the best map in Episode 4, and I think it's dethroned Mount Erebus as my personal favourite Doom 1 level as well. Let me know your thoughts on E4M2 in the comments section, and how you would rank it among the rest of Doom's levels. See you next time.